G'day, my name is B-Asian Dad, and we're going to look to this Asus BR1100. Now this is the FK model I've got here, and it is an 11-inch 2-1 laptop. Now this is aimed for your students, specifically the K-12 sector. So that's your primary school kid age bracket range that you're looking at, and I will be looking at the temperatures and factory life, as well as the features of this computer. Now I'll also try and help you guys out by putting timestamps along this video so you can skip to different sections that you may be interested in. Now, having spent a bit of time with this computer here, I am actually very pleasantly surprised by its features and also how it performs overall, and especially its price point as well, which we'll get into later. So let's get into a little bit more in depth with this Let's start off what this computer can be configured with. Now with the processor wise, it can be either configured with a Celeron, which is either a 2 or a 4 core. Now this particular unit I've actually got here is a 2 core Celeron. And in the past, the 2 core Celeron was pretty lacking in ability to do multitask. And having a bit of play with this computer for the last two weeks, I can tell you that this is not the case with this particular generation of Celeron. You can multitask, so it's not very single task based. So I'm gonna say they've actually made a bit of improvement on this new Celeron. So then of course having four cores will also be better. Now you can also get a Pentium, which is four cores, and of course that will be a lot better than the Celeron. Now as for the RAM wise or the memory, it can be anywhere between a four gigs all the way up to 16 gigs. Now, my advice is to go at least an eight gigs for memory because the RAM is soldered to the system board. You won't be able to upgrade it later on. And I find eight gigs is a good sweet spot. Four gigs is lacking a bit these days and it'd be nice to, of course, go to 16 gigs. But of course, this is all about budget. Now, as for the storage wise of this Asus BR1100, you can either get a 64 gig version or a 128 gigs. Now, again, my advice is try and maybe look at the 128 gigs if your budget permits, because with 64 gigs of storage, if you've got Windows plus your Office Suite in there, you're already taking off 45 gigs used already, and you haven't even started storing any data. So all you've got left is around about 15 gigs. And that's, in these days, I find quite small amount of storage space, even if you're using cloud-based storage. And it's because you do still need to have some sort of storage space to have the cache files. So my advice is to try and look at the 128 gigs. Now, you can, it does have an expansion slot for a one slot of M.2 that you can put a 228 M.2 PVME drive in there, but still you like to at least get the 128 gig version because Children probably wouldn't understand a lot, or unless you teach them how to actually save off the C drive and maybe onto a D drive. So do take that into account. Now, as for the graphics, it is using the Intel integrated graphics, which does all right, and that's all we really expect. Now, this actual laptop also comes with Bluetooth and of course, Wi-Fi. It does come with a 720p webcam, which is located above the display and also includes a privacy shutter. And now that means is just a nice little flick of a switch and you'll see a physical shutter that goes over the lens and it will also go red to signify there's something physically covering the webcam so you don't have prying eyes if the webcam accidentally turns on. All they see is black. So you don't need that electrical tape or blue tack, which is great for kids. Now, it also comes with a secondary camera, which is above the keyboard. And I'll just show you what this one does. And what this, what I mean by two one, this computer can also flip its screen all the way to that and then change it to a tablet. Now, when it's in tablet mode, this is where that webcam, which is a world facing camera. So you can actually take photos along the way, which is great to see. And again, when this computer on the left side of the computer is also has a garage pen. So this garage pen is when you get put into tab mode, then you can start doing your note taking or drawings or what do you want to do with a digital pen, which is absolutely great to see that it's at garaged in to the computer so you won't hopefully lose that pen. I like that idea. This is a recording from the 720p webcam from the BR1100. This is the video and audio unedited so you can hear and see what the quality is like. Now, I've actually got two types of lights currently turned on. I've got one of my street lights turned on and I've also got down lights in this 
room turned on as well. So I'm going to turn off my street light. And you see this adjust now this is quite a bit of a dark environment i've got two downlights in front of me which is quite far away and we've got two downlights behind me as well now if you're in a classroom environment or a home i expect you probably have a little bit more light than what i am so this is like i said a more dark environment and it just pretty quick i've got to admit now i'm going to turn on my one street light back on and you'll see hopefully with better light should get you better quality picture now i'd definitely love to hear what your thoughts about this webcam is like Let's have a little pause. Starting on the left-hand side of the computer, we've got the security lock slot, and then we've got the barrel style where you plug in the AC power, and then we've got a USB type C port, which is USB 3.2 Gen 2, a USB type A port, which is USB 3.2 Gen 1, and then we've got a full-size HDMI port, and then we've got the garage digital pen. Looking on the right-hand side of the computer, we've got the RJ45 Ethernet port, a USB type A port, and then we've got the optional micro SD card and SIM card tray slot, headphone jack and power button, and then the volume buttons. There are two speakers located on the bottom front of the computer, and when I tested up the speakers for its maximum volume, it managed to measure in at a peak of 86.8 decibels, which is surprisingly much more louder than I was expecting for a kid laptop. Now as for the sound quality of the speakers, I can pretty much tell you they're pretty average. It doesn't have much bass, but the mids and highs, they were pretty nicely balanced. And of course the acoustics was pretty much straight to the front. And that's all I really expect from the, a kid's laptop. Sound quality of the BR1100. The BR1100 comes with a 45 watt power adapter. Now this power adapter is quite small. You can see from the size of my palm, now I've got quite small palms and it does charge via a special barrel port style. Now you can also charge the BR1100 using the USB type C port. So if you've got a docking station or even another USB type C charger, it only requires 45 watts of power and most of them should be able to do 65 watts but just to let you know you can charge the laptop using the USB type C port. As for the battery it comes with a free cell 42 watt hour battery and this particular unit I've got here it has the Celeron N4500. I tested this unit in my battery life test and I tested in my five different modes. So in best performance, it managed to get three hours and 50 minutes. And in better performance mode, it managed to get four hours and 15 minutes. And in better battery life mode, it managed to get six hours. And in battery saving mode, it managed to get 12 hours. And in my media mode, it managed to get eight hours. So I was actually pleasantly surprised by the amount of battery life in this computer here. It does very well. You should be able to get the whole entire day and more than likely you should be able to get two to three days on a kid's use. Now, as a disclaimer, my battery life test does a consistent workload across all the system resources. So you should actually get better battery life numbers than what I would because most applications only use spike or burst speed on all the system resources. So I'm just giving you the worst case scenario. The weight of the BR1100 is 1.38 kilos, add in the 45 watt power adapter becomes a total combined weight of 1.64 kilos. As for the temperatures and fan of this computer, first off, I'd like to say that this computer here is passively cool. And what that means is there's no fan in this computer, so this computer pretty much runs practically silent. Now, as for the temperatures, when I put this on computer on 100% load, I found most of the heat was concentrated near the center of the keyboard, specifically where the U and Y key is. And that's unsurprising because it's where the processor lays underneath. Now, when I took my measurements, my ambient temperatures was 21 degrees Celsius. Now, I also want to give you a bit of background information as well too. So, I also did a measurement of my hand, and most hands are anywhere between 32 to about 34 degrees Celsius. So, take that in mind when I'm going to read out the temperatures for you. So, when I took the base measurement, when the computer was on idle, and the hottest area of the keyboard measured in at 
32 and a half degrees Celsius. And when I put the computer on 20% load, so that's pretty much average use. So that's like things like office activity work, streaming videos, as well as surfing the web. And the hottest area of the keyboard measured in at 34 and a half degrees Celsius. And then put the computer on 50% load and the hottest area of the keyboard measured in at 35 degrees Celsius. And then put the computer on 100% load and the hottest area of the keyboard measured in at 39 and a half degrees Celsius. I also measured the back cover of this computer here and the hottest area measured in at 38 degrees Celsius. So surprisingly, you could put this computer on your lap, but I still would not advise anyone to put computers on the lap still. Even though it's 38 degrees, it still is a little bit warmer than your heart, especially for your kids. Now I also measure the computer when it's in tablet mode. So the hottest area when in tablet mode for the display side was 34 degrees Celsius. And as for the keyboard side, the hottest area measured in at 35 and a half degrees Celsius in tablet mode. As you see from the temperatures, the computer doesn't really run that hot at all. Now, in practice wise, the actual buttons itself they're only going to be around between 32 to 33 degrees Celsius. So you don't even barely feel that this computer is warm when this is running on 100% load. So this computer surprisingly has it being passively cool. You don't see any exhaust neither as well too, and it runs silent. That's pretty amazing, I must admit, that the temperatures as well as its noise factor is extremely, extremely well. As for the build construction of this computer here, it is pretty much made of plastic. I'm not gonna lie about that, but it is actually quite tough and durable plastic. Now you can definitely tell this is made very rugged as well because it's got some good rubber bits all around the edges to actually be able to take on impact. Now, Asus does say that this can take an impact of being dropped up to 120 centimeters. So it's around about desk height, they say, which is probably about the height of their hands. Now, I can definitely believe that because it definitely does feel very rugged for them. Now, as for, you can see there's not much flex in this computer here. And also with the actual keyboard, there's not too much flex there as well too and also the actual texture of the back and front cover is like a dimple style so it's very textured so you actually have a good grip for those tiny hands for the kids and as for the hinge wise you'll see that even if i do my hinge test you'll see it's clamping quite well there as well too. Now as for my one finger test, you'll see also clamp quite well here. You do need to have two hands to actually open it up. Now opening up, it is very smooth all the way down to when it goes to in two in one mode. Now, of course, once you get to about the 200 degree mark, it will disengage the keyboard. So that no longer works anymore because once it goes to there, you're in tablet mode. Now there is a few modes here while I'm at it. And of course you've got your laptop mode, you've got your stand mode, and also there is the tent mode, and then you've got your tablet mode when you can actually do some right. So there are the different modes that this thing can go into. Now, also just to let you know that that's display there is quite a bit of a bezel but that is normal for two months because when you're in tablet mode a lot of kids and including adults will over grip and that's to stop for so it doesn't need to do the palm rejection so definitely they've got a fair bit of bezel around the all four corners i want to bring an interesting feature that ASUS have put in the BR1100 and that is the status light which is located on the top cover now when this computer has a solid status light it means all is well it's all functioning fine. Now, when this status light is got a slow white blink, it means that this computer here is around about 20% in battery life or under. So this will definitely look at getting this computer powered up with AC power or mains power. And when the status light here is got a quick blink, it means there is network continuity issues. So then we can then quickly for the teacher to, well made fully for teachers so they have a quick glance of the class if there's any students having issues with their laptop. I love that feature that ACES have put into this particular model. As for the keyboard, it houses the standard ACES keyboard arrangement. Now, the surface texture of each individual key is quite coarse, but it's not distracting in any level. 
and it's got quite a nice key treble and a nice tactile or bounce feel of each individual key. And the space is quite nice for kids with small hands as well. As for the backlight, now this particular unit I've got here doesn't have backlight, but I can see it probably is able to actually have backlight by having that function F7 key. And as for the trackpad, it's got a nice size for the trackpad. It is hinged at the top and you can depress it mechanically at the bottom. And it is multi gestures. And as for the surface of the trackpad, it is quite smooth and it's able to register even if you've got moist fingers. As for the palm rest, it's got a nice smooth plastic feel for the palm rest. And as for the sizing, it's actually good enough for your kid's hands. But if you're an adult trying to type it, you do will feel it on the bottom of your palm for the edges. Measuring the maximum luminance or the brightness of the display using my colorometer, it came to a value of 219 candle per square meter, or one candle per square meter equals one nit of brightness. So this is about 219 or 220 nit of brightness display. Now I have tested this in shaded areas and it does all right when displaying the picture or text, but in, of course, if it's direct sunlight, it does struggle quite a bit. Testing out the color gamut coverage of the HD display, which has a maximum resolution of 1366 by 768. It managed to measure in at 66.8% sRGB coverage and 46.8% Adobe RGB coverage and 47.9% DCI P3 coverage. That puts it at mid-class color coverage, but that's pretty good value considering the price of this laptop. The BR1100 does come with a digital pen. Now, when this digital pen is poured or docked into the laptop, it does recharge this digital pen. So you don't need any extra batteries for it, which is fantastic. And it does have two physical buttons here, which you can then customize in the Asus pen software or the Windows pen software as well. Now, the tip is also pressure sensitive as well. The actual form and shape of this pen is quite thin. It's great for little kids. And I'm just gonna now perform the line of jitter tests. Now, I'm not a digital artist, so I'm gonna say, excuse me for my lines, but I'm doing try to do my best to do some straight diagonal lines. And I do have my palm on the display. I'm just sort of quick ones. And I'm just going to do some with the ruler. Now we'll have one palm on the display. And we'll see how it goes. Now I'm also going to do two lines of contact. So second line of contract and I do have my palm on the display and my other hand on the display as well. Now I'm also going to try and do some spirals. And I'm just going to show you the parallax is quite decent. It's actually quite responsive, I can tell you that. I'm just going to do some writing. And I can definitely tell you it is quite quick and there's not that much parallax at all. And it definitely, it does feel like I'm writing on paper, which is fantastic to feel. Now I did perform the benchmarks of this computer here. Now this particular unit I've got has the Celeron N4500 processor with four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs SSD. And I'll put up the scores for Passmark, Citibench R23, PC Mark, Geekbench 5 and Crystal Disk Mark. Having a look at the results of the benchmarks of this computer, uh, I can definitely tell you that compared to a lot of the laptops that I review on this channel, this doesn't perform extremely high. But in practice wise, looking at the utility as well as its functions for little kids, this actually does pretty well. When I was just doing surfing the web as well as just firing up some applications that a kid might actually install or run. So overall, in that sort of sense, this performs its function very well. Having the price of the BR1100, it starts off around about $320 USD. 
And here in Australia, it's about $600 you can get this computer for, which is quite amazing for especially the amount of functionality this computer brings. I'm actually wowed by the actual price itself. Having all the overall functionality and the features of this computer, and especially this price, I have to admit that I can definitely recommend the Asus BR1100. Now, I hope you found this video informative or enjoyed it. If you did, or even support my channel, smack that like button for me. And if you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button. I'll do try to upload a new video every week. And just remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. And I'll see you next video.